You have an incredible amount of power. Why should we trust you? Um, you should AI isn't just evolving, it's accelerating faster than anyone can keep up with. And if you think you understand what's coming, you don't. Here's what an ex-open AI scientist has to say. You may not take interest in politics, but politics will take interest in you. For decades, this line has been used as a reminder that power always finds its way into people's lives whether they want it or not. But at a recent convocation speech in Toronto, Ilya Sutskever, one of the founding scientists of OpenAI, twisted that line into something even more chilling. He told a room full of fresh graduates that the same applies to artificial intelligence. Only multiplied many times over, what he delivered wasn't the kind of inspirational pep talk anyone was expecting. It was a blunt warning about a future rushing toward us faster than most people realize. Usually these moments are filled with sentimental advice about chasing dreams and changing the world. Instead, what they got was a man who helped create modern AI standing on stage and telling them that the world is about to change them and not necessarily in ways they'll be prepared for. It was less go seize the future and more the future is coming to seize you. Ilya Sutskever isn't just another scientist waving his hands about doomsday scenarios. He's one of the most respected figures in the field, a former protege of Jeffrey Hinton, the so-called godfather of AI. Sutskever helped design the algorithms that underpin much of today's AI technology and went on to co-found OpenAI alongside Elon Musk and Sam Altman. When someone with that resume says you have no idea what's coming, the statement lands with a gravity that's hard to ignore. From the very beginning, he made it clear that his speech would not be the usual celebration of hard work and ambition. He told the students that they were living in an unusual time, not in the way older generations like to exaggerate their own eras, but in a very real sense. The unusual factor was AI, and the impact it's already having on society was only the beginning. He pointed out how students themselves already rely on AI for studying and writing, how professionals are starting to use it to automate their work, and how those are only early ripples of what's coming. The core of his message was simple but unnerving. Anything a human brain can do, a digital brain will eventually do as well. His reasoning was straightforward. The human brain is, at its core, a biological computer. If biological computers can learn, then so can digital ones. And if digital brains keep improving at their current pace, it's only a matter of time before they match and then surpass everything we can do. He asked the audience to imagine what it means when machines are capable of doing all human jobs, not just some of them. Today's AI might look impressive when it writes essays, generates images, or codes simple programs, but it's still clumsy in many ways. That clumsiness won't last. Whether it takes three years, five years, or 10, the technology will reach a point where there's no meaningful distinction between what a person can learn and what a machine can. The effect of that realization in the room was heavy. You could almost feel the graduates mentally reevaluating their career choices. What's the point of studying law, medicine, or engineering if a machine could master those disciplines faster and without error? Sutskever didn't offer easy comfort. Instead, he emphasized how difficult it is even for him to process this future emotionally. Intellectually, the logic makes sense. The path is clear. Machines will self-improve, expand their capabilities, and eventually outperform us. But emotionally, it still feels unthinkable. The idea that humans might become second-tier intelligence on Earth doesn't sit well with anyone. The challenge AI poses may be the greatest humanity has ever faced. Ignoring it is not an option. The best we can do is pay attention, engage with the technology, and be ready to generate the collective energy needed to meet that challenge when it fully arrives. It wasn't the sort of message that leaves people clapping and cheering, but that was the point. He wanted them unsettled. He wanted them thinking about what's actually at stake. And then, as if that wasn't enough to leave people uneasy, former Google CEO Eric Schmidt has been making the rounds with his own take on AI's trajectory. Where Sutskiver framed it as a looming inevitability, Schmidt has been mapping out exactly how soon that inevitability might crash into our daily lives. His timeline is even more alarming. He has argued that within just a year, most programmers could be replaced by AI. Within three to five years, we could be staring down the arrival of artificial general intelligence, machines as smart as the smartest humans in nearly every field. Schmidt calls this belief the San Francisco Consensus, a shorthand for the near-religious conviction among Silicon Valley insiders that AGI is right around the corner. The idea isn't science fiction for them, it's a countdown. If Sutskaver was urging us to emotionally prepare for a radical shift, Schmidt was essentially telling us to mark our calendars. 
years. Schmidt's perspective goes further than general warnings. He points to how AI is no longer confined to being a passive tool. The newest systems are becoming what researchers call agents. Instead of waiting for instructions, they can take a task and independently decide the steps needed to complete it. That ability, he argues, changes everything. A machine that can not only respond to prompts, but also plan, adapt, and act begins to resemble something far closer to human reasoning than simple automation. The idea sounds technical, but the consequences are concrete. Consider a company that once needed dozens of junior analysts to sift through data, organize it, and present conclusions. An AI agent could be given the same assignment and figure out how to pull the data, analyze it, and even format a report without direct human oversight. That's not just about saving time. It's about removing the human role almost entirely. Scale that across industries, and the shape of the workforce begins to look very different. Schmidt has warned that this shift could happen faster than governments or institutions can adjust. In the past, new technologies disrupted certain sectors but left others untouched for long stretches of time. Factories automated but offices remained. Computers replaced some clerical work but created new jobs in IT and design. With AI, the disruption is not contained to a single field. Because intelligence is universal, the applications reach into every discipline at once. Medicine, law, engineering, and creative arts, none are outside its scope. What makes this more unsettling is the prospect of self-improvement. A human learns through study and experience, but at a natural pace, with limits to memory and attention. A digital system, once designed to learn on its own, can operate without those constraints. Each improvement feeds into the next, accelerating progress in a loop. This is the point at which the discussion shifts from artificial intelligence to artificial general intelligence, and eventually to what some call superintelligence, systems far beyond the smartest human mind. Both Sutskaver and Schmidt avoid the language of science fiction. They are not talking about sentient machines with human personalities. They are talking about capacity, the ability to solve problems, to plan, to innovate. When those capacities reach levels beyond human scale, the effects ripple outward. An AI that can design better algorithms could improve itself. An AI that can discover new materials could change entire industries. An AI that can model complex systems could influence global economics or climate strategies. The question is not if it will matter, but how much control society will retain as it happens. The uncertainty is what unsettles researchers most. On one hand, the potential benefits are extraordinary. Medical breakthroughs, cleaner energy solutions, faster progress in science and engineering, all are possible. On the other hand, the risks are difficult to measure. A system that operates beyond human comprehension raises questions of oversight. How do you regulate or direct a technology smarter than those writing the regulations? And if such systems become central to economies, who decides how they are used? The thread running through both Sutskevers and Schmidt's remarks is less about predicting a single outcome and more about underscoring how unprepared society still is. The technology has advanced faster than public understanding, faster than most institutions can adapt, and certainly faster than governments have managed to regulate. For graduates stepping into the world, that reality is not something abstract. It will shape their careers, their economies, and even their identities. Satskivir admitted as much in Toronto. He said plainly that he himself struggles to process what this all means emotionally. Intellectually, the logic is straightforward. Digital minds will surpass biological ones. But emotionally, it's a truth that collides with human instinct. We have always measured ourselves by intelligence, by the ability to to think and reason. The idea of another form of intelligence overtaking us is difficult to reconcile. That tension, the gap between knowing what's coming and feeling unable to absorb it, may be one of the defining challenges of this era. There is also the question of trust. If intelligence itself is no longer exclusively human, who will decide how it is directed? Will it be guided by governments, by corporations, or by the technology itself? These are not distant questions, they are pressing ones, because the systems are already here in early forms. The world is already seeing debates about misinformation generated by machines, about copyright and ownership, about jobs displaced by automation. These are the small signs of larger transformations still to come. Neither Sutskever nor Schmidt offered simple solutions, because there aren't any. The future of AI will not be decided by one invention or one policy. It will unfold through a series of choices about how it is built, how it is used, and who is given access. What they both emphasize is the need to stay engaged. Turning away or dismissing the subject as hype is no longer an option. The scale of the change is too great. As the ex-OpenAI scientists warned, we truly have no idea what's coming, but maybe together we can start the conversation.
Comment your thoughts like this video and subscribe for more eye-opening explorations into our future.